Uh, thank you very much for uh, our just. We know that it's not, uh, in our, it's not our culture to do Skype interviews, but because of the pandemic, a lot of things have changed. But uh, thank you for joining oh, us on the show sure. this morning. <laughs> so so uh, it's a culture for us on the show to always ask our guests how they are. Uh, honestly, we know that there's a pandemic, a lot of things have changed. So how are you, honestly? Well, I'm fine, although mm -hmm. I'm trying to cope with the pandemic. Mm -hmm. Not easy, but we don't have a choice. True, true. Well, seeing that it's uh, something new to the world, a lot of uh, the, the regular, the, the normal has become a new normal. So do you think by any chance that the world will return to the way it was before? Or are we just going to continue like this and move on as the new normal? What do you think? Well, obviously, the world will still return to the way it was. Mm. It will only take some time. Mm. Scientists are working around the clock to make vaccines that will be treated mm -hmm. for coronavirus patients. Yeah. Okay. So so we're hoping that to... time. Yeah. We just have to cope. Okay. Okay. All right. So um let's even get right into today's conversation. Uh we're talking about uh reviving theater in Nigeria as, uh, as, as a topic for today. Uh, well, you are the first African to have like a doctorate degree using uh, uh, drama as therapy. How did you feel and how, how was it for you in, in, in that space, being the first African to achieve this? Well, the point is that it is not easy because it is not an area of the theater. Mm that many people really go into, but it is very, very necessary because it is useful for everybody in all spheres of life, hospitals, prisons, psycho, psycho hospitals, you know, mm -hmm. all of us are suffering from one ailment or the other, and it is not every ailment that to go to hospital and they give you medicine. True. For example, if you if you have a fracture, a surgeon will take care of it. Mm -hmm. You have headache, they give you an adjustment. Yeah. But if you have pain in the heart, there's no medicine for that. And that is where drama therapist comes in. Hmm. So the drama therapist is uh, a, a practice that that uh, that solely focuses on the pains in the heart no not that okay so and en en enlighten people to understand what the drama therapist okay. is all about yes all right drama therapy in short is the intentional use of creative drama mm -hmm. towards the goals of symptoms relief emotional and the physical integration and personal growth. What do we mean by this? The simple analogy is to use this COVID-19 experience. Okay. During this COVID period, many people have suffered a lot, lots of abuse. They've suffered lots of emotional disorder. Mm -hmm. All this can be taken care of through drama therapy. There is something called post-traumatic stress disorder. Yes. Which drama therapy can easily do to make these patients be comfortable and reintegrate into the society. Hmm. But in, 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 a, in a country like it Nigeria, is in a country like Nigeria where this is, uh, I wouldn't say this is a, a new practice, but it is not as uh, popular as uh, people would know it. So how do you think, uh, um, why is it this way in Nigeria? Why don't people know that drama therapy is something that we need 
or it's a good way to um, to um, tackle situations like this? Well, it boils down the understanding of drama by several people. Number one, it also boils down on its recognition by the government. Hmm. In better climes, it is you. It is and several other institutions mm -hmm. in Nigeria now, though it is new, you are right, if you say it is new, yeah. it is new, but mm -hmm. it is gaining ground. People are now going into it. People are now seeing the relevance of using drama as therapy. Mm. Most of the drama we watch on TV, some of them contain little bit of therapy. But because the producers or directors are not well trained, grounded in the techniques of drama therapy, the area is still lacking. But with time, we shall have more people into it. Mm. Now, speaking about theatre in Nigeria, uh, we know that there was there, there was a time in Nigeria where th um, going to the theatres was like the biggest thing. Like Nigerians would every weekend or every um, day there about, they go to the theaters to, to watch performances. But now it is slowly becoming not as, uh, it's slowly becoming a thing of the past. Now, what would you say was the disconnect? Why did this happen? Because like you said, if it's, uh, it's drama therapy, it's, a, it's, a, it's, a, it's something that we should really look into. But theater on its own in Nigeria is not as strong as it used to be. What do you think has, what do you think caused this situation? Yes, I agree that it is not as strong as it used to be. Mm -hmm. Before COVID-19, there was insecurity. You know, theater used to be done in the evening. Yes. And due to insecurity, many people will not go to where they are not safe. Mm. Had it been there is security, people will not mind to go out in the evening to watch a live performance. Mm -hmm. That is one. Two. The incursion of um, home video also affected it, but yes. it was bounced back because home video is good, but it cannot be compared to live drama. You see, that interaction between the audience and the performers cannot be quantified. It, it cannot be replaced. Hmm. So I have the strong belief that after COVID-19, Live theater will still bounce back. Hmm. Now it's 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 good that, uh, like I said earlier, it was it used to be a culture of Nigerians, or the, it used to be our culture to go and watch live performances yes. anyway, anyhow. That was what we used to do. But <laughs> like you said, uh, the home video inculcation came in, and a lot of things changed. But now that uh, we are moving forward into uh, uh, we're in a p pandemic, and the situation is. We can't have gatherings as before. So what would you say is the, um, the, the, the next surviving step for theater? Let's say the COVID-19 pandemic stays longer than we expect it. So how, what would be the next surviving plan, seeing the fact that theater has to do with people coming together to watch a live performance? Is there any way or any way out for that? Well, for now, uh, practicing social distancing or physical distancing as it were mm -hmm. in a theater might be difficult because even if you do it among the audience, what about the actors, the actors. on stage that need to interact? Mm -hmm. However, that is where drama now comes in. Mm. Teledrama is a situation where we watch issues from the comfort of our home. But, as it, but like I said, it is still not the same as live drama. But we still have to cope with that. We still have to cope with that until this pandemic is over. Hmm. 
Now, uh, I, I, I really like the fact that we're talk, talking about theater because I enjoy live performances a lot because I feel that, like you said, there's nothing uh, b uh, better than feeling the emotions of, of the audience and the audience feeling the emotions of the actors on stage. They are really, it really connects and help uh, build up a great show. But now that, um, the reason why I'm hammering on the fact that the things have changed regarding because the new generation, were not or are not uh, being exposed to a lot of theaters because if you look at it, we don't even have enough venues to go and watch theater performances. We rather have cinemas to go and watch movies, home videos, but we don't have enough venues to go and watch um, <laughs> theater performances. So would you say is the fault of, of the people, the, 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 the theater practitioners, or would you say the government also has a role to play in uh, creating these venues or avenues at which these uh, practitioners can, can, can showcase? You see, it is not the fault of the theater practitioners. How many theater practitioners will build theaters for people to come and watch? It is a big venture, and that is why the government needs to come in. You see, entertainment venture, theater venture is a very lucrative area for the government to even earn IGR. Hmm. If they could invest in it, they are bound to make profit over time. There are so many countries, Brazil, India, that they do it and they make profits from it. Why can't we copy something like that from them? Hmm. So I feel like for investors, so for the private sector and people who are actually practitioners, there are ways that I believe that they can have smaller um, um, places where they can perform that don't have to really cost so much. But a lot of times people still don't see these things happen. Like if you want to listen to good live music, you can go to a bar where they're having live bands and you can listen to live music. But if you want to watch a theater performance, you probably have to look for the big uh, um, venues to go and watch one or pay so much money to watch one. So why can't we have small pocket uh, performances in different places where it can be easily accessible for the people? Is there a, a, a rule or a guideline that says, no, you can't have it in a certain kind of space or it has to be a certain kind of capacity before you can operate? No, to the best of my knowledge, there is no rule or guideline that says so. But the, the cost of production might be scary to mm. people. You know, you have to pay actors, you have to get light, set, costumes, and how much will people pay to enter? And what is going to be the capacity of the hall? Mm. A hall, for example, that sees only 200 people. Yeah might charge a thousand or two thousand naira for people to pay. And how many people are ready to pay two thousand naira to watch a live performance of one hour or one hour twenty minutes? Mm -hmm. And nobody wants to run at a loss. Mm -hmm. So that is the question. Yeah. But if the hall is big, they can reduce the price and they still make their profit. True. And that is where the investors have to come in, supported by the government. And that is also why we may not have pocket th theater buildings, as you said. Mm -hmm. Because a bar is easy to set. All they need is just a, a, a place. That is all. Mm -hmm. But in the theater, it is not like that. Bar doesn't use costume. It doesn't need special light. It yeah. doesn't to construct sets. Yeah. And all these things cost money in the theater. So that is why you can't have all these pocket theaters. But if you have investors supported by government, we can have at least few of them in certain areas, and then we make their money too. Hmm. Interesting. Well, we're hoping that uh, with these conversations, the necessary uh, um, arms would be able to see this as an avenue to uh, invest into. Now, before we wrap this up, uh, you were, we're speaking about the government involvement in this. Now, we see that drama therapy is very, very necessary. Now, how has the government uh, been able to, you know, be part of 
this uh, initiative and seeing how they can move it forward. Has, has the government been uh, involved in this? Or if, if not, so how can they or what should they do or what private sectors can do to come in to push this uh, new initiative? I would say so myself. Yes. Well, the government has not been involved, neither have uh, private investors showed interest. Okay. But a lot could be done by granting grants to people to go into that area. Mm -hmm. It is very necessary. A lot could also be done to recognize people who are into it. Most of what we are doing, we are doing it free of charge. I work with psychiatric hospitals. I work with a prison mm -hmm. using drama therapy, all free of charge, social service. Oh. Yes, I can do it, but many people will not be able to do it. So if there is encouragement, and encourage people, they will specialize in it, mm. and it's the best for our country. Mm. Interesting. I like the fact that you said you, you go to prisons, you go to hospitals, and you do this all by yourself, without any support from uh, government or private sectors or individuals. Do you understand? So without any and it's And you, you do this free of charge? Yes, it's my calling. I love it. Hmm. So, 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 so how often do you do this? How often do you um, visit uh, the prisons and the hospitals to do performances? Is it like a constant um, weekly performance or monthly thing? Or how often do you do it? Well, it is not uh, weekly or monthly. Okay. Like quarterly. Because, quarterly. Of course, I have a lot of other things to do. Okay. Know. Yes. Hmm. All right. Uh, thank you very much for this uh, very, very insightful conversation, because we know that this is, like I said, it's something new, but like you made it uh, clear that it's something that is very important in this part of the world, seeing the fact that we have a lot of uh, um, emotional issues, psychological issues, and uh, drama therapy goes a long way in making sure that uh, it, it tackles issues like that that we don't see. Uh, thank you very much, sir, for, your, for this conversation, and uh, we hope that uh, this uh, new movement will definitely get into the hearts of Nigerians, and we can welcome it as a very, very uh, good establishment. Thank you very much for your time.